Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our video series on 2023's external exams in Queensland for general mathematics. This is paper two, which is our complex familiar and unfamiliar questions. And the topic is um, bivariate data and it's the fourth question on the paper. Before we get into it, why not consider engaging further with us here at the channel? You could like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you'll always know when the next video has been released. You could consider super like, give back a dollar or two um, to your favourite YouTube channel to thank us for all the hard work that we put in behind the scenes. You could also tell someone about this video or even tell us in the comments. I'd always love to hear your feedback and follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Let's get right into question four. It's worth five marks. Hiroki believes that more fish are caught on warmer days. Gyro believes that the number of fish caught in a day is more dependent on the number of people fishing. Bivariate data sets for six days are shown. So we've got one here with temperature and the number of fish caught, and one here with the number of people fishing and the number of fish caught. Now we can automatically um, work out who belongs to who, but let's just get into this first and find out what they want us to do. We first of all need to calculate the correlation coefficient for each data set and use the results to identify the explanatory variable for the stronger linear association. There's a couple of steps in here. This will be our first one, calculating those. Then we're going to come up with the least line, squares line equation for the stronger linear association to predict the number of fish caught on a 25 degree day when 50 people are fishing. Okay, so let's break this down to some smaller parts first of all. We know this is Hiroki because Hiroki believes about the temperature and the fish caught. So he believes the temperature has an effect on how many fish you're catching and that means that this one is Gyro's model here. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to calculate that correlation coefficient. It's also called Pearson's correlation coefficient. It's represented by the letter R on your calculator and on your formula sheet. The best place to go though to is to your calculator. So let's get our calculator up here and now. So I'm using the Casio calculator. It might be worth, if you've got a different calculator, watching a different video on how to use yours. But I'm gonna show you how to use this one for statistics. So we're gonna start by clicking on mode setup, number two, and tell it number two for bivariate data. Then we're gonna start by entering Hiroki's information. So 32, 26, 20, 27, 23, 29 and when we get to this stage we should just check we've got definitely got six pieces of data there so coming back up we're going to put in our number of fish caught now and we've definitely got six and six we can also check our numbers if we wanted to I'm going to press the green all clear button then go shift and one for stat now at this stage I don't need to work out a and b not necessary I only really need to work out the correlation coefficient r so I'm going to jump down to option five for regression, that's what the reg stands for, and R is there, and it's three, and we found out that Hiroki's um, correlation coefficient is 0 0.309. So I should write that down somewhere. Let's do the same for gyro now. So I'm gonna clear that off, back to mode setup, number two, number two again, and enter that in. Now that I have that all entered in, all clear button, shift, number one for stat, straight to number five for regression, number three for Pearson's correlation coefficient, pressure equals button, 0 0.0866. So what I've done here is I've worked out that Hiroki's was a 0.3, Gyro's is a 0.8. Okay, so I should write both of those down. So now I've got those written down. Now the question's asking me to use these results to identify the explanatory variable for the stronger linear association. So firstly, I get my first of five marks because I've correctly calculated um, R for each of those data sets. But now I need to focus on moving on and working out which has the stronger linear association. Well, you'd recall that the closer this is to the number one or negative one, the stronger the association is. Clearly, gyro has the higher um, correlation coefficient. So we're going to use the results and identify the explanatory variable. So we're looking at this table only, which one explains the other one? Well, remember, explanatory is your X coordinates. That's that first row there. It's going to be the number of people fishing, P. So because I've identified that now, I'm gonna get my second mark. Okay, now that we've done that, our next step is we need to use gyro's information to come up with the least squared line equation. 
Now, I've already got that information in my calculator. I didn't clear it out, so it's still sitting there. So let's bring the calculator back. Okay, so I've still got that sitting on the screen. So if I all clear that now, it's still sitting for gyros information, it's still sitting in the memory. So if I'm gonna come over to here to one, same place I'm gonna go, number five, and I wanna find the values for A and for B. So if I click on number one, my value for A is negative 129.84, write that down, and then go back to the same place again, number five, B, number two, press equals, and I get 10.8934 for my B value. So we're gonna write those down now. Okay, you'd recall that y equals a plus bx, but you're going to use the variables that they've given us for gyro, p and f. So we're actually gonna replace this x with a p and the y with an f when we come up with our equation. That's important. If you don't use the variables that they provide you, you may not get the full mark. So be very careful that you use p and f. Okay, so therefore, f, which replace the y, equals a minus 30 plus 11p, which replaced our x value. Now, after 2025, um, we're going to be using different variables. We're going to be using y equals mx plus c. So something to be aware of in the future is that a is a y-intercept, which is equal to c, and b is a gradient, which is equal to m. So if you're watching us after 2025, just bear in mind those small changes. And I will be releasing a little video that will explain that a bit further. But let's continue. Okay, so now we need to use this equation for gyro to work out the number of fish, P, when there's 50 people fishing on a 25 degree day. Now you'll notice for gyro, um, and yes, we did get a, a mark here for that, but you'll notice for gyro that temperature is irrelevant for his model. So the fact that it's a 25 degree day is not going to help us with this equation. This equation is only interested in the number of people fishing. So uh, we need to substitute P equals 50 into the equation, show the substitution and you get a mark, so don't just jump straight to the answer. And then you're going to find that there is 420 fish. Don't write um, for 20 decimal places, you want whole numbers of fish here and you will get that final mark for predicting the number of fish. Well, I sure hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to engage with us further. We mentioned some of those ways at the beginning of the video, liking and subscribing, telling someone about it, following us on social media and super liking. If you've got any questions about what you've seen here today, McClutchymass at yahoo.com is the best place to reach us. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to our loyal subscribers for returning time and time again. Have an amazing day.